Zen me angle. That is, how's it going? In Mandarin. Welcome back to another video, everybody. Hope we're all doing all alright today. I am here in the forest of Borland, which is, uh, it's somewhere at Ribble Valley. Just put it that way. <laughs> uh, I've been here before, uh, not for a while now, though. Uh, I came in like, I think it was like early 2021 I came here. Um, so yeah, I'm back for a wild camp. I don't know how well the camera picks it up, but it's pea soup today. It's drizzly. Very, very muggy though. Very, very muggy and humid. But everything is soaked because of this, you know, consistent drizzle. Um, so I don't know how getting a fire going is going to go later on. But regardless still, we're here for a wild camp. And I'm, I'm just meandering around at the minute, trying to find somewhere decent to pitch. Well, more of a recce, really. Um, hey, up. CCTV in operation. I have to be a ninja about this one, I reckon. Anyway, if you want to stick around, see if I manage to pull this trip off, please do. So annual weather report time, as I said to you, it's pretty damn miserable today, but I'm not letting it down from my spirits because, you know, this morning when I was checking the weather uh, and I saw that it pretty much got to be like this all day in Clitheroe, you know, River Valley, whatever, and that tiny little, you know, voice of doubt crept into the back of my head going, Do you know, I'll you could just stay at home if you wanted to you know and your excuse is that it's going to be raining and I thought that would be so easy but then I thought you know what no no place of doubt because the thing is obviously I'm you know aiming to continue wild camping through all seasons of the year and if I want to camp in winter time I have to expect weather to be a bit more harsh because granted I have been very lucky so far doing these wild camps on my own it's always been decent weather and at some point the weather is going to kick my ass it just that's the name of the game bigs and bobs so yeah but regardless last week we had a massive heat wave um, and i'm talking it was all the way throughout the uk but where i were in north we're about 38 at its hottest and yeah pretty sweltering and i'd actually toyed around with the idea of going for a wild camp and I thought, nah, sod that, I'll get, I'll die of heat stroke or something. <laughs> anyway. Right, bigs and bogs. <laughs> Slight change of plan. Um, I've been walking around now for quite a bit and I'm making the executive decision not to go home, but my mum's going to come back and get me because, you know, <laughs> My mummy dropped me off for it, and um, hopefully I'm going to see if that'll take me to the uh, Graham Road because at least on Graham Road I know exactly where I'm going because I do still want a wild camp but I've been walking around here for ages and I'm just getting soaked by the minute down to my flipping undies and you know it, it's a big place is Borland and if it had been not raining, I would have just carried on and pushed in. But it's changed a lot since last came. I mean, I don't know how well the camera picks it up, but there's so many trees that have fallen over. And that's obviously why there's so much forestry work going on around here. And I'm slightly concerned if I pitch up in them pine forests, one might fall on me and squish me into jelly. So, uh, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, I'm not going to let it dampen me because <laughs> I'm quite literally very damp but I'm just going to push back to where my mum dropped me off um, head home and hopefully by about 4 o'clock say I can be out on Graham Road uh, with my tent set up 
so anyway stick around guys this adventure ain't over yet right so bigs and bogs i found this map of borland and i just wanted to show you for context what actually happened where i went wrong so i'm now here and i'll weave my way up all the way up to here all the way around and this bit here was all open so i came down here came across this feet this meadow here um and i got to around about here basically and i ideally wanted to head over to this area but i got to here and i understand now why it says strictly no access because some of the trees that had fallen down around here you know they, they were units they were i don't know maybe 70 80 foot tall and if one of those had come down on me you know what i mean it would have been game over um so yeah i got to about here but this is where obviously i won't bullshit people you know it's not that i've come ill prepared and made a mistake if it had been fine weather i probably would have just cracked on in my pig headedness but yeah trying to push through here it was so dense and i mean i'm pretty wet already and i have actually <laughs> the thing is i expected it to rain today so i have come expecting rain i've got some waterproofs in my bag which i'll uh fashion show for you later on when i get to grain but it was here where i thought it weren't that it weren't that voice of doubt in my mind or out like that saying oh, back out blah, blah, blah. it was the voice of reason and it was saying right if you're gonna change plans you need to do it now don't be um and annoying for the next five minutes because it'll cost you possibly you know the difference between carrying on with this trip and not but yeah i'm back at like i say i'm, I'm back at the main road now i'm just waiting for the mama bird to come and get me and uh yeah it's a grain road so i'll catch him with you all in a bit right bigs and bugs we're in the car obviously you know who these two are hello hello <laughs> thanks for coming to get me what are your thoughts for the viewers of what i just tried to do <laughs> well personally i had every faith in you <laughs> Surprised, to be honest, Oliver. Um, Obviously, my mum would come and get me. Well, obviously, but we thought, you know, we thought you knew what you were doing with your Megan's and your. Well, I have. I was gonna. I was gonna do like a fashion show later on of all my new waterproofs I've got. <laughs> anyway, I was thinking about this on the way back. I was just pondering to myself while we're walking back to Main Road, and I've got a question for you. Yeah. Would you rather have? an elephant sized sasquatch or 100 guinea pig sized sasquatches as like your personal bodyguard oh right so we can use them to our own advantage yeah have to find them. yeah um i'd probably say the elephant sized sasquatch yeah This is the content I wanted. Yeah, they don't yeah, well, like people with rodents because they don't like rodents. They don't like rodents. And you can pick them up and throw them at people. But I thought you'd use them for your own advantage. Yeah, I am. And then it's why you turn people off. Yeah, turn people off. Nah, I'd like the elephant. The elephant's ass, that's Sasquatch. Yeah. See, I thought about this. And I immediately thought elephant's ass, that's Sasquatch because essentially it's King Kong. There you go, see? But, but, obviously, like, I know a guinea pig's a guinea pig, but. Yeah, if it's got Sasquatch strength, yeah. it's like, you know, I, I chimpanzees are six times stronger than a human and they can literally just pull you in half. True. And so, I'd have more strength than can, I, can, I, can I, I actually went for 100 uh, guinea pig size can Sasquatches. Can I, can, I, can I maybe like veto my ball then? Go on then. 100 <laughs> no, 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 I'm no, 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 no,
they can either all join together to make one giant Sasquatch of tiny Sasquatch. It's like tiny little Sasquatch <laughs> make one big Sasquatch. It'd be so cool. And but then if anything happens to any of them in battle or whatever, you've got ninety nine more to protect them. You know, so, yes, I how much so. would how much damage could could the elephant sized Sasquatch take? That is the question. Well, I feel like it could probably take a tiger. <laughs> Like, it'd be, I think it'd take a few MKs to be honest. Yeah. You know, machine guns and shit like that. Oh, yeah, no. But I if a tank shot it, I think it's game over. Well, that, that's the thing, isn't it? And as you say, once it's dead, you, you, you're, uh, no it's one, game no over. So I think we're going to go with 100 guinea pig sized Sasquatches, yeah, aren't we? Yeah. Three all. <laughs> there were two ones to begin with, but we've, we've ter it's gone to three all. <laughs> Alrighty. Big puts and boggarts. We're on the green road. Man, that was a hectic few hours. Um, yeah, got my tent up. <clears throat> I'm going to try and get a fire going later on. Because more or less within five minutes of me setting the tent up, the midges returned with a vengeance. Like, I cannot be doing with this. Um, that pile of wood over there, it's actually reasonably dry, so I might be able to magic some of it up, but we'll see. But... <laughs> Pink to make the ladies wink. <laughs> Pick myself up, a nice little poncho, Mr. Dave. Uh, me and the gang went out to Morecambe for a day out, and they had this amazing second-hand army gear shop. Um, and I, I, I'm in market for a new rucksack actually, because uh, the one I've got right now, obviously it's a good it's a good rucksack, but I'm still carrying the tent out of it, even though I can get everything else in. So I need something even bigger. So I thought, well, I'll just have a quick little look in there and see if there's out they can offer me. But they were out that were big enough really. Um, so yeah, probably a trip to go outdoors soon is on the cards, but. God's sake, bigs and bogs. I think my airbed um, pump might have uh, cacked it. I think it might be dead. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to... I might have to resort to trying to blow it up old-fashioned method with my mouth. We'll see how that goes. Um, so, yeah, stay tuned. I, don't, I can't really be asked for it being an uncomfortable night's sleep on the floor. Fuck that. Point my bench. But yeah, I'm just chilling out, I'll have them resting for a minute or two, and then I'm going to get a coffee on the go and um, maybe start gathering some firewood to see if I can get the fire going. Because I've got a steak for my tea tonight, and um, you know, failing everything else, I've got my stove kit to cook that with. But they've been out like cooking a nice juicy steak on a roaring fire, so we'll see what we can do anyway. Right, so you might be wondering why am I walking down the main road? And you'd be right to do so because I tried blowing the airbed up with my mouth and that ain't happening. <laughs> there must have been Oh excuse me guys, I'm just down to kind of seven up. <clears throat> a bit of a sugar boost to get me back. Uh yeah, there was just a tiny bit of juice left in the batteries in my uh, air pump, but it weren't producing much. Uh, it was just barely bro blowing a breeze out of the, the the nozzle. So I thought, you know what? I can't sleep on bare floor. So I'm going to have to walk to Aslinden again. <laughs> Try and get some batteries. Anyway, I have done. Mission accomplished. Um, there's a dog barking at me. Hello, doggies. Anyway, yeah, I got to Aslinden and the first paper shop I found, I went in and thankfully, shout out shop owner and paper shop in Aslinden, wherever you are, you'll probably never see this, but you guaranteed I'll have a comfy night's sleep because he gifted me four packs of D-sized batteries. They're out of date, but he said there might be some juice in them, you can just have them. Uh, and he did actually test them on his little gigameter thing i don't know what they call them but exactly but th there is some you know there's some decent juice in them so combine even if you know i use all eight tonight 
combine between them all, I'll get that airbed back up. So, yeah, all as well as ends well. I'm just on my way back now to Graham. And yeah, then I'm gonna, you know, get these bad boys powered up and uh, there's summer in here. Must be Megan's. All these dogs are barking whenever they see me. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get back and I'm just thinking about a nice juicy steak for me tea. Right, big foots and boggarts. It was all worth it. All's well, it ends well. Got my tea on the go now. Got a nice piece of steak and some mushrooms and some broccoli that I'll chuck on right at end. Um, don't really want to film too much of this because I just need I need to concentrate on cooking my food and uh, keeping this fire going. Cause the problem is, is the ground that I've laid it on it's obviously sodden, um, so I need to keep the heat consistent with it. So I'll check in with you all in a little bit. Hey, right. all as well as it ends well. Again, I said that before. <laughs> Food's finished, cooking now. Fire's gently ticking away. Get me, get that in my belly now. So I'm finally chilling in my tent. That was for the most part today a lot of graft, and it's what time is it? Twenty past eight, and I'm finally just sort of being able to let me air down now. And just enjoy the fire and just watch Netflix on my phone and chill out. Um, but yeah, um, when you finally get to the end line and I can just relax and I want her bed and you know I've got it up as much as I can do really, and it's just gonna have to do really. But I don't really want to do too much. I don't really feel like doing too much filming now. I just want to relax and. Enjoy my evening. I'll probably do a log just as I'm going to sleep, but for now, a okay. Bigfoots and bogs. It's about half past nine, I'd say roughly. Uh, I've not gone too silly with booze tonight. I've just got a couple of cans of ale, and uh, I thought I'd share one of them with you right now. Pick this little unit up from Lidl. Oosh. It's made by the Hop Foundry. Tropical. Spelled T R O P I C A L E. Tropical. Not tropical. Tropical. It's a pale ale. It's only 4%. Which usually is a rule for me. I don't drink out less than 5%. Um. Yeah, I thought I'd do a quick beer review before it gets too dark. <clears throat> a nice hoppy smell to it. A thirst quenching pale ale, refreshing tropical notes. Yeah, it's not bad. I've been on the good stuff these last few months, drinking Northern Monk. That is very, very tasty ale, is that? Um, so, yeah, not bad. Not the best I've ever drank, but it'll do the trick. Bigs and bogs. Oh, I can hear something hooting. Let me stop now. I'm absolutely bushed, so I'm going to sign off and try and get some sleep while well, our fire is roaring. Despite the stop and start antics of today, obviously shout out goes to my amazing family for catering to my needs. Um, Having to walk to Aslington to get some batteries for the airbed pump. It's been a great wild camp. And, uh, yeah. I'm signing off now.
So, I'll see you all in the morning. Night, night. <laughs>
um, in relation to our big hairy friends was I came across a really good trail cam picture recently from somewhere in the states or Canada I can't remember where exactly it came from but yeah I'll show it you now um, you can decide what you think but we've spoke loads on this channel in the past about uh, trail camera pictures you know like capturing Bigfoot not always the most reliable really or sometimes it can be a hoax blah 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 I think this is a pretty damn good picture and you know it's got the classic uh, bent knee arch between the thigh and the lower leg uh, what you would normally associate with a Bigfoot type creature um, which again it's not impossible to pull that off because I've tried it myself as we know but this looks like an actual legitimate naturally moving creature as opposed to somebody in a suit that's trying to pause that motion so yeah whoever, took, whoever managed to catch that picture well done basically because yeah I think that's some pretty damn good evidence well breakfast is now on the go some sausages and chopped baby button mushrooms Coming along quite nicely. Don't want to manoeuvre this pan too much while I'm filming, just in case I spill the gas canister over and send the tent and myself up into a ball of flames. But yeah, just cooking my breakfast and uh, I'll check in with you all in a little bit. Right, big some box. We're done. Another one in the bank. Uh, it's about, I think it's about half ten. I had a good little ramble then for the montage out footage. And I'll follow in some deers. Hopefully, I'll manage to get some decent amount of footage to put in the montage. Uh, but yeah, once obviously they saw me, they liked it. But it was amazing because they were barking like crazy. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Proper cool. <laughs> but yeah, I'm done now. Um, I'm coming back noticeably lighter than what I went in. Because my tent cacked it. R.I.P. The tent of love. <laughs> Those that know, no. no. <laughs> um... Yeah, it were a budget tent to be fair, and I noticed it up on Sabden the other week. Just little things that were starting to fail with it. You know, the fabric were ripping too easy and stuff, and I thought, yeah, I might have to look into getting a new one. So when I was packing it away into the bag this morning, the zip on the bag flew right off. So I've retired it. But there you go, I'll go. Gives me an excuse now to go to go outdoors, <laughs> buy me a new tent. Some people go clothes shopping, I go tent shopping, bigs and bugs. <laughs> so yeah, my mate Harry, who is annoying as fuck to be honest with you, he's gonna come and get me. He's somebody I work with. 
a pain in the ass, but he's gonna come and pick me up, guys. I can't really, you know. He wanted to come camping with me, and I was like, no, mate, but you can come and pick me up. So, yeah, he's gonna come and do that. Uh, so, yeah, um, a bit of a hectic one, this, because obviously I started off in Boland and then ended up here. The weather's been against me on this one as well. Uh, it's not been obviously disastrous, but I've had to adapt here and there, you know, and like I was said to do that trek to go and get some batteries from here from your bed. So just got us to prove to you you need to prepare, prepare, prepare and prepare some more and cover all eventualities. Otherwise you'll end up on your ass. So yeah, I think I'm gonna uh, wrap it up there for this one. Hey mate. Right. Um I'm going to wrap it up here with, on that note. And yeah, if you made it through to the end of the video, God bless as always. Thanks for watching. Um, leave, us, leave us a like if you want. Leave us a comment if you think there's anything I could do better. No doubt Simon Clark will comment. Uh, I know you're really looking out for me, mate. And uh, yeah, I'll hopefully see you very soon. Bye-bye.